we're here at our eFix live feed event and we're here with Alex Parker, who is the regional specification manager for the East Midlands of ACO. And what are we here specifically to talk about with Alex Gaz? We've got the audio link technology built into this detector and you're going to talk us through some of its special features. Is that right, Alex? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, audio link, when you hear that, that word audio link, you think of technology built into the alarm. Mm -hmm. This is a, a method of data extraction. So we're not talking about um, anything that goes into the alarm. We're not talking about the radio modules. We're talking about technology built into the actual head of the alarm. Um, and it actually works via audio hence the name Audio Link. Right. So the alarm will transmit a sound via Audio Link to a mobile phone, generating a report, giving you all the information you need to know about that alarm. So you're telling me that we're not using Bluetooth, we're not using Wi-Fi or anything like that. Nope. It just sends an audio signal and that yeah. downloads information from the device to your mobile phone with the app that you've got installed on there. Yeah. And it will generate a report Absolutely. on the device. Yeah, so if you take that for a second. So it works on any mobile phone, mm -hmm. get the ACO Audio Link app, free to download from any app store. All you need to do is find an alarm, an ACO alarm with this phone symbol on. Okay. As long as that phone symbol is on the alarm, it will show that it is an, ACO, uh, an Audio Link compatible alarm. Mm -hmm. Okay. As long as it's got power to it, you need to put the app in download alarm data. Okay. Go up to the alarm and press that button three times with power to it. Okay. In about five to 10 seconds, it will generate a report um, via audio link, um, and that alarm, that report will look something like something like this. Okay. Oh, wow! And what's the advantage of doing that? So it's a fantastic piece of technology. It downloads a report, but why? Well, there's a number of reasons. For me, I always think of compliance. Mm -hmm. So if someone's going out, a contractor is going out to a job, whether it's a reactive call out, a periodic inspection, a change of tenancy, or even a commissioning of an alarm, an installation of an alarm. Audio Link would help in all of those um, in all of those um, cases. Mm -hmm. If you think from an installer, if I was an installer, I would want a paper trail to show that I've been and done the job that I've said and I've been paid to do. In case anything ever came back to me, I would want to be able to say, "Hang on a minute, I was at the address in question here on the let's take this for example, the 22nd of October, 2:36 uh, p.m., and everything." with that alarm was absolutely fine. It works with a traffic light system, so green is okay, mm -hmm. fine. Uh, amber is caution and red is warning. Right. So you can see it being used in the rented sector or the social yeah. housing sector in order to get that word Absolutely, compliance. every sector, yeah. in my opinion. This, is, uh, this can be used in, in any environment where an ACO alarm is being installed, whether it's a private ownership house or a rented accommodation, whatever it is. Um, Audio Link will help. And what kind of information will it generate on the report that you've got on your phone now? So if we look at this one here, first of all, it gives you the, the age of mm -hmm. the alarm. So straight away, we can see here that this replacement on the alarm is replaced is due to be replaced on April 2030. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. It gives you the mains power status. Any time the head, head has been removed, any time the power, mains power supply has gone off. It gives you the sensor information. So. Um, making sure everything's okay with all the sensors and different type and the different sensors we do in the alarms, any activations, any peak CO readings, any high temperatures, mm -hmm. whatever the sensor is designed to do is going to okay. give you a, a, a bit of information showing you that peak or high reading. So it's built into the head. Is the ability to have this doing two functions? You mentioned CO there. Can it do say CO and heat? Yeah, absolutely. So if I give me. One second. So this one here is an EI3028. So it's not this alarm here. Mm -hmm. Our EI3028 is a combined heat CO alarm. Okay. They are two independent alarms, if you like, just together in one housing. Mm -hmm. So the heat alarm will work as a standard heat alarm. The CO chamber will work as a CO sensor. Um, and it will give you the CO readings and then the temperature readings at the bottom. And is that part of the, uh, the 3000 range? Is it? Yeah, so the Audio Link comes as standard mm -hmm. on our 3000 series alarms mm -hmm. in addition to our 208 battery carbon monoxide alarms. Brilliant, that's fantastic. So a little bit more about the, the 3000 range. So what other features does it have? Yeah, so primarily is it what we call a grade D1 alarm, mm -hmm. which means mains powered with a tamper-proof battery backup. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on tamper-proof? Yeah, so if you turn the, the alarm around here, yeah. I mean, this is our um, our sample, our sound okay. reduced sample, but in a normal alarm, this sticker wouldn't be there and you'd have a, a lithium rechargeable battery cell okay. in the actual 
uh, back of the base mm. of the alarm, if you like. Oh, right, that's fantastic. As opposed to one of our, our other ranges, the 140 series, mm -hmm. which has a nine volt yeah. user replaceable battery. Oh, that's fantastic. And that, that kind of ties in quite nicely because um, this year there's been some changes to BS5839, I yeah. believe, regarding this this issue. So what what are those changes that have impacted? Is it, it there's a, a new type of category D alarm? Is that, is that am I thinking that so right? BS5839 Part 6 2019 mm -hmm. is the update that replaces the 2013 update. Yep. Um, part 6 is to do with the domestic installation of fire alarms, mm -hmm. fire and smoke alarms. And um, up until May this year, 2019, it just said grade D. There are other grades, mm -hmm. but if we talk about grade D alarms, yeah. that meant a mains powered alarm with a form of battery backup. Right. Okay. The May re reclassification, if you like, uh, went into a bit more detail and says grade D is no longer a sufficient enough explanation of what it needs to be. It needs to have a mains power mm -hmm. and, the, and it all varies, uh, change on the, the type of battery backup. Right. So when we talk about grade D1 and D2, mm -hmm. they both have mains power, but yep. grade D1 has your tamper proof battery backup right. and grade D2 has your mm -hmm. user replaceable battery. So they've, they've split grade D into two further exactly, categories yeah. effectively, a D1, which is tamper proof, tamper -proof yeah. which would obviously be perfect for things like rented accommodation, and social housing and things yeah. like that. And then your grade D2, you could, the, the homeowner, the resident effectively, yeah. they can access the battery if, they, if it needs replacing, I guess. Yeah, so the standards recommend that all rented properties now, whether mm -hmm. it's social or private rented, should have a grade D1 mm -hmm. alarm installed in their properties. Yeah. What sort of locations are we going to install the actual heads themselves? What about in the, the property they're going to be installed? Yeah, so this is the second main change in the standards. So the first one was that reclassification of grade D to D1 and D2. The second one was the change in of the, what we call our category. So category for me, I would try and remember that as coverage. Mm -hmm. So we've learned, we've heard about the, the reclassification of the grades. The actual coverage of those alarms within that property has also been changed as well. They now recommend what we call a category LD2 mm -hmm. as a minimum. LD2 means it encompasses your escape routes plus your high risk areas. Mm -hmm. So again, prior to the update in May this year, they, the standards recommended LD3 level of coverage. Mm -hmm. LD3 meant purely just your escape routes. And we're talking about maybe the hall stairs and exactly landing. Exactly that. The, yeah, the so nine times out of 10, that's gonna be your downstairs hallway and your upstairs landing. Yeah. They are your main escape routes within a property. Now LD2, it encompasses LD3, but it also adds your high risk areas. So your two high risk areas in a property generally are gonna be your, your kitchen, mm -hmm. where you should have a heat alarm, yep. yeah. plus your principal habitable room aka your living room, right. which should have a smoke alarm in there. Does that further go on, say, when you've got, say, a gas boiler? Is there any more uh, further mm. detectors required in those areas? So the standards recommend that if you are, if there's a property with a gas boiler in there, you should have a carbon monoxide alarm covering that that appliance as, as well as the flues mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So if there's any room where the flues pass flu, um, through, flu, <laughs> um, then you should also put a carbon monoxide alarm in that room as well. Yeah. And solid fuels? So legally, solid fuel uh, appliances should be covered anyway. New or replacement solid fuel appliances by law should have a carbon monoxide alarm within that room. Standards go a little bit further. No. I recommend um, all fuel burning appliances, gas boilers, etc. Brilliant, okay. Well, thank you very much indeed, Alex, for introducing us to uh, the audio link, telling us a little bit more about BS5839 and the excellent 3000 series as well. You must look at this product and think, wow, I love you 3000. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. See you.